Welcome to the world of material science. My name is Professor Bonnet. In this video, we will learn more about other designation systems for steel. Having learned about the designation of steels based on the application and properties in group 1 in the last video, we will now look at group 2. The steel names of group 2 are classified in five subcategories that differ in their content of alloying elements. The classification is as follows. First, unalloyed steels with a manganese content of less than 1%. Second, unalloyed steels with a manganese content of more than 1%. Third, alloyed steels with an alloying content of less than 5%. Fourth, high alloy steels with an alloying content of more than 5%. And fifth, high speed steels. Like the designations in group one, the steel named in group 2, according to Dean EN 10027 part 1, consist of principal and additional symbols. However, there are different rules for the formation of the names in the different groups of steel. Regarding the notation of the steel names, it should be noted that there are no spaces between the identification letters and numbers, whereas the identification numbers for the alloying elements are separated by a hyphen. Please don't let the apparent variety of different rules discourage you. After solving the problems at the end of this chapter and remembering the most important rules explained in this video, you will no longer be scared of even the most horribly complicated looking designations of materials. Let's start with the subcategory 1 of unalloyed steels with manganese content of less than 1%. The principal symbol are C for carbon and a number that equals the average carbon percentage content multiplied by 100. The additional symbols indicate the application or the sulfur content. Accordingly, C70D designates an unalloyed steel with an average carbon content of 0.7% used for wire drawing. Whenever you see a material designation that starts with a C, you'll know that it describes an unalloyed steel. This is always followed by the average carbon percentage content multiplied by 100. Next, we'll look at both subcategory 2, unalloyed steels with a manganese content of more than 1%, and group 3, alloyed steels, because they are subject to the same rules. The steel names are made up of the following principal symbols. A number that equals the average carbon percentage content multiplied by 100, followed by symbols for the alloying elements characterizing the steel, and numbers separated by hyphens that correspond to the average content of the elements multiplied by certain factors. As different alloying elements are added in different small amounts, there are several groups with different factors. The objective of these factors is to allow us to work with whole numbers instead of decimals. The average percentage content of the alloying elements chromium, cobalt, manganese, nickel, silicon and tungsten are multiplied by a factor of 4. Nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur and cerium use the factor 100. The other elements like aluminum, beryllium, copper, molybdenum, niobium, lead, tantalum, titanium, vanadium and zircon are given by a factor of 10 of their content. An exception is boron with a factor of 1000. Here you can see the list of all the elements and their respective factors. Accordingly, the designation 13 CRMO44 can be decoded as follows. It is, a, it is an alloyed steel with an average carbon content of 13 divided by 100, so 0.13% carbon. Four divided by four, so one percent 
of chromium and 4 divided by 10, so 0.4% of molybdenum. Whenever you see a material designation that starts with a number, you'll know that it describes an alloyed steel or an unalloyed steel with a manganese content of more than 1%. The number is always followed by the characteristic alloying elements. In comparison to the alloyed steels, the designation of the high alloy steels is relatively simple to decode. The principal symbol is an X followed by a number that equals the average percentage carbon content multiplied by 100, what we already know from the unalloyed and alloyed steels. This is also followed by symbols for the alloying elements characterizing the steel and numbers separated by hyphens. As the total content of alloying elements in high alloy steels is more than 5%, there are no factors anymore. The numbers directly indicate the average content of the elements rounded off to whole numbers. For example, the designation X5CRNI1810 can be decoded as follows. X is a high alloy steel with 0.05% carbon, 18% chromium and 10% nickel. It is also very common that the designation lists more chemical elements than numbers for the content. This means that the average content of the other alloying elements is less than 1%, whereas the low value can be found in the relevant product standard, which for high alloy steels is often the DIN EN 10088 standard. Accordingly, the designation X6CRMONB171 denotes a high alloy steel with an average carbon content of 0.06%, 17% chromium, 1% molybdenum and, according to the standard, small amounts of niobium. According to the standard, this high alloy steel contains at least 7 times the carbon content plus 0.1% niobium and a maximum of 1% niobium, which means 0.52 to 1%. The reason why some steels contain alloying elements, such as chromium, molybdenum or niobium at all, will be explained in following videos on the categorization of steels, high alloy steels and on corrosion. Whenever you see a material designation that starts with an X, you'll know that it is a high alloy steel. This is always followed by the average carbon content multiplied by 100. High-speed steels are designated with the preceding letters HS, followed by numbers separated by hyphen, indicating the percentage of the alloying elements in the following order tungsten, molybdenum, vanadium and cobalt. Unlike the alloyed and high-alloyed steels, where the order of the alloying elements depends on their content, they are arranged by decreasing content, the order never changes for high-speed steels. Since the alloying elements are always the same, they don't have to, de to be specified. For example, the designation HS2101 can be decoded as follows. High-speed steel with 2% of tungsten, 10% of molybdenum, 1% of vanadium and 8% of cobalt. Whenever you see a material designation that starts with HS, you'll know that it designates a high-speed steel. This is always followed by numbers indicating 
the content of tungsten, molybdenum, vanadium and cobalt. For the designation of steel using material numbers, the DIN EN 10027 was introduced. All steels included in European standards were given a material number according to this system. The material number are valid in addition to the steel names already explained. The material designation according to the numerical system consists of five digits. The first digit indicates, as we have already seen, the main material group. The number for steel is 1. The standard also defines a material number with a main group number for all materials, metallic and non-metallic. While the use of material numbers is very common for metallic materials, they are rarely used for non-metallic materials, especially plastics. The main material group number is followed by the two-digit steel group number and two-digit identification number. Important information can be directly derived at least from the steel group number. A complete list of the steel group numbers with explanations can be found in DIN EN 10027. The standard further categorizes the unalloyed quality steels in strength classes and the alloyed steel special steels according to their main alloying elements or the special properties. Since you need to look up these identification numbers at the end of the material number in tables anyway, and since no direct information can be inferred from the numbers, I won't go into them in detail here. As I said before, the material number complements the other designation systems. Let's look at some examples. The material number 1.0037 shows us that it is a steel, namely a basic steel. This material number corresponds to the designation S235JR. This designation tells us that it is a structural steel with a minimum yield strength of 235 megapascal and a minimum notch bar impact work of 27 joule at room temperature. Some older professionals still know this steel by the outdated designation ST372, which has been invalid since 1994. The material number 1.0577 identifies the material as a steel, namely a quality steel. This material number is also equivalent to the designation S355J2. This designation tells us that it is a structural steel with a minimum yield strength of 355 megapascal and a minimum notch bar impact work of 27 joules at minus 20 degrees Celsius. The old designation is ST523. The material number 1.4016 shows us that it is a steel, namely an alloyed special steel. This material number is also equivalent to the designation X8CR16. This designation tells us that this is a high alloy steel with an average carbon content of 0.08% and 16% chromium. The material number 1.4301 indicates a steel and more explicitly an unalloyed special steel. This material number also corresponds to the designation X5CR NI1810. The designation describes a high alloy steel with an average carbon content of 0.05% and 80% chromium as well as 10% nickel. Many professionals know this first commercial rust proof steel as V2A. Thanks for watching. In the next videos we will talk about binary systems and phase diagrams.